figure out where to start. We just kind of went around in circles. Problems piling up after Idalia. How are you feeling right now? I'm tired. <laughs> Eight on your side investigator Masa Saidi is on the ground with critical tips. Plus a driver plows clear through a home. It is the second crash like this on the same street in just months. What needs to change? And who's responsible? And ruffling the feathers of our new flamingo friends. They are beautiful birds, but please, please, please keep your distance. The warning to give them some space. Good evening, I'm Stacy Scheibel. And I'm Keith Tate. Thank you for joining us tonight. For thousands of Hurricane Idalia survivors, this is a daunting task. First, they have to clean up from all the flooding and then get their insurance company to pay up. Eight on your side, investigator Masa Saidi is back from one very hard hit area. Masa. Stacey Keith, and let me show you what we are seeing. Just piles of garbage out on the street. If this is what you're dealing with, we want to give you some tips to navigate the difficult road ahead. We were in Crystal River 48 hours after Adalia. The hurricane was long gone, but the recovery was just getting started. Amy Messer and her family had a heck of a week. How are you feeling right now? I'm tired. <laughs> you know, people that live on the water, we spend days prepping for the storm to come in. They were focused on circulating air after taking in 12 inches of water. The Messers hired a crew to help. Outside, the stuff they could not salvage. All this was not insured. But Amy's husband, John, says they did have flood coverage for their main home. Like so many other families, now for the first time, they're filing an insurance claim. We're in touch with the, uh, with the uh, insurance company and they're um, supposed to be uh, having an adjuster get in touch with us. How much is all this costing? Yet? Don't know. It's nothing like any other decisions that we've made as far as, well, how much is this going to cost? This is just, it's going to cost what it's going to cost. Right. It just has to be done. But most people are focusing on the flood because it came in and you could see the flood. Attorney David Murray has repped homeowners for 20 years. He says you have one year to file a claim. Insurance companies have 30 days to inspect and 60 days to approve or deny your claim. And if you contact them within seven days, they got to get back to you. I think the most significant thing is windstorm damages can sometimes be hidden or not as significant as flood damage. If you're not going to hire someone to be an advocate for you, for you then you need to make sure you're your own best advocate. So from this specific hurricane, most people think they only had flood damage. But again, that attorney, David Murray's biggest tip right now, make sure you did not have wind damage as well. Of course, your homeowner's policy covers wind damage. Flood insurance only covers flood damage. And it can be hard to tell if you have wind damage. We often talk about before the storm, you know, get all your documents, make sure you protect them. But now this is a whole new line of keeping new documents after the storm. You got to keep records. Yeah, that's right. You want to record everything, all your interactions with your insurance company. You also want to document the damage issues caused from the wind versus the flood. And if you can't tell if is this wind, is this flood, consider getting an engineer or a construction consultant. But again, like you said, record document. everything. Right. The key is getting it fixed right. Too. That's right. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Masa. And if you have something you'd like.